Hey everybody, welcome to the Dice Matrix, it's your old buddy E.T. here, and today we're going to learn how to play the two-player game, Tides of Madness. It's a drafting game in which each player will take turns drafting cards out of their hand, selecting them to put into their tableau, and scoring port, uh, points. This takes place over three rounds, and this is kind of set in a Cthulian universe. The artwork is beautiful. Uh, let's go to the table and take a look. So in your Tides of Madness box, you're going to receive the 18 cards that you play with. You're going to get a pencil and a score pad. Um, this cup does not come, but I use them to put these multiple Madness tokens easily kept to the side. You'd be crazy to forget those. And a very simple rule sheet that I'm going to just break down for you in very simple terms. Um, not that it needs to be that much simpler, but it's always nice to watch a video, right? You can set your score thing to the side. Your box I like to leave open because you're going to be discarding cards back into it as the game goes on. So the first thing you're going to do is deal five cards to each player. And remember, this is only a two-player game, so other people will just have to watch. You'll set the draw cards to the side. And so in a drafting game, of course, you're going to look at all your cards. You're just going to select a card, and your opponent will select a card. Let's just say they select that one. And then you're both going to display your card in your tableau. So I would put this in mine, and they would put that in theirs. And then they would. we would now trade hands, and then we will continue to draft again. We will continue this process until each of us have five cards in our display and or tableau, whatever you like to call it. So let's just kind of lay these out for an example. And each, so let's say my opponent's cards are displayed over there, which I'm going to do in a mess, but let's say this is your display. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at how many of these symbols have these tentacles off to the left. So cards will either just have basically nothing on the left or they're going to have these tentacles over here. Um, and that represents madness. I have two in my display here, so I will take two madness tokens. And let's see, my opponent had three over there. Sorry, I was being a little sloppy. And so he'll take three. Whoever collects the most madness at this point in this round will uh, have a choice. They can either receive four victory points or they can return one madness token uh, to the goal, uh, back to the, the cup. Because any time in the game, including before you can return one back to the cup. If you have nine madness or more, you immediately lose the game. You don't even finish the other two rounds. Now, if both of you have nine madness apiece, you both go crazy and nobody wins. So hopefully that doesn't happen, although I guess it could. So in this case, my opponent decided not to score four extra victory points, and they returned one of their madness. So we both have two apiece now. Now, there are five suits in this game, and they're in the top left. And I may not remember exactly the names, but I'll give you fun names to, to, to call them. I like to call this uh, Gold Badge, Blue Scroll, um, Scary Tentacles, Green Library Book, and <laughs> Red Clock Tower. I'm going to show you one over here from my opponent up to the top left there. And most of these have very simple scoring conditions on them. For instance, this says for each one of these I have displayed in my tablet right now, I would gain three victory points. So I don't have any, but let's just say for, for instance, I had, oh, let's, let's discard this. Okay, so let's just say these were in my tableau right now, all these cards, and now it says I gained three victory points for each one of these, and I do have one. So this card would score me three points. I like to kind of keep track of it. I do one player at a time. And I'll say, you know, I'll usually start with the card on the left, but you can do it however that, that suits you, of course. And then I'll say, okay, uh, I get three for each one of those. I have one here, so that's three. This one says double the rewards of your previously played card. So that's a specialty card. The previous played card before this was this card. So instead of three, I'm going to gain six. So that had triggered. This says... If I have a majority in these symbols, the Cthulhu, whatever scary uh, tentacle looking things there, um, I would gain seven. Well, my opponent actually has one and I actually have none. So that's not gonna score me any points. Now, uh, this other one here says for majority in scrolls, uh, I have one scroll, my opponent has one scroll over here. So I do not have a majority. So that will score me no points. 
And right here, this says for each one of those I gain, for each blue scroll I gain, I do have one, so that will gain me three victory points. So basically I got what, six? That triggered, okay, that made it six, nothing, nothing, and three, so I score nine. So over on the score pad, I would write, I've got nine here on my side. And then I would do the same for my opponent and score his side. So now the part of the game is, you will take all your cards back into your hand for the second round, and you're gonna choose one to keep permanently in your tableau for the rest of the game. And you'll say, oh, you know, I really like this, um, you know, uh, I don't know, the blue one for each one of these, because I know there's at least one left in, in here, and there's one there's one in my hand, and my opponent has one. So, you, so basically, you place this face down, and then you're gonna choose one to return to the box face down so your opponent doesn't know. And now your opponent will do the same. They will secretly keep a card that they want, and then they will secret, uh, they will, so that's going to be in their dis tableau display, and then they will return one. Now we both have three cards left a piece. We will grab the main draw deck. We will both receive two new cards, and then we will reveal the cards that we have, what we're working on for our, our new permanent tableau, and we're going to repeat the process again. We'll continue drafting, and uh, since I knew I had a a blue one, or that might have been the one I accidentally threw back. But anyway, you'll draft a card, they'll draft a card, and then you reveal simultaneously, and then you'll, you know, swap again, and you'll continue this out. But now you'll have six cards eventually in your display, okay? And you'll repeat the process of you looking for how many, you'll receive madness tokens. So I would receive two more. So it gives me four madness. And my um, opponent will receive uh, one... Two, so they'll receive two madness, so we both have four apiece. So nobody gets to score four victory points or return one to the box that turn because we both had received two. Um, and likewise, we'll take turns and score. Sorry, that's upside down. We'll score each card all, the way the tableau is set up now, although this is the, like the permanent one I kept in play, and I would score you know three because I got one of those. So uh, that, that will score, and then this time, this stays in play, and you'll return... For the third round, book upcoming, you'll draw all five of these up. That one that you kept in the first round is still in play, and you'll choose another one secretly to keep permanently for the last round in your tableau, and you'll discard one secretly to the box so your opponent doesn't know that information, and they will do the same. Let's say they decide to keep a card secretly, and then they discard a card, and then for the last round, you will deal out. Each person gets the final two cards apiece. You reveal what you were holding, and then you see what your opponent's holding, and now you will finish off the draft. You take one, you pass the cards, and then you'll continue to do this. Oh, they'll draft one and pass the cards. I'll draft one from mine and pass it. Anyway, eventually we'll both have five apiece. And they'll, uh, uh, out of that draft. Plus our now two makes our final tableau as large as seven. Well, it'll be exactly seven. And then you'll do one more round. You'll collect your uh, Cthulhu tokens. If anybody has nine at that point, madness. And then you'll score your points, uh, either four victory points or return one to the box. Um, but you'll add up each round. You'll do three rounds. And then at the end of the three rounds, whoever has the most victory points wins the game. It is as simple as that. Now, I really love this game. I've played this a lot. I've played it's also its predecessor, um, Tides of Time. The only real difference is that there is no madness tokens in the original game. So if you don't like the cthulhu -y or dark artworky type, you can get the Tides of Madness. It plays exactly the same, except for you don't go crazy when you play. <laughs> well, um, I highly recommend this. If you just need a, a light filler game, you can play a bunch of games quick, and you can get pretty good at it. It works a little bit on your memory, and it's just very smooth and elegant. And I have to say, this game, this game is all around just pretty awesome. I thank you so much for watching the Dice Matrix. Until next time, my friends, keep the cards flopping or the dice rolling.